Hello and welcome to Eco Farm. This is episode 7, I do believe, already. And you join us as we are just approaching the bank. And we're going to go and draw down some of our credit line. Got a new a new venture. Another new venture. <laughs> we did a new venture in the last did as well. So yeah, so let's get the money first and then we'll get on back up to the farm and uh, I'll be able to go into a little bit more depth about what we're going to be doing. So let's have a look and see. I do believe that we, yeah, 466,000 euros is our limit at the moment. So I think we'll draw down some of that, maybe 100,000 or so. Um, we'll probably utilize it fairly quickly. Um, just because it's available then we need to get going you know we need to be building up as quickly as we can um, mindful of course that we have we will have um, interest service every month and monthly repayments but once we've got our productions I know well income coming from the farm basically be it productions or otherwise uh, we should we should manage it I don't think we'll go for uh, five years. I think we'll go for a bit, something a bit longer. Let's try ten years and see what the repayment is. Because we pay a bit more because the interest goes for a bit longer. But we do have a clause built into our credit arrangement allowing us to uh, repay early, which is the basically it's basically the plan really get these loans paid as quickly as we can once we going once we consolidating basically right so that's that done hundred thousand taken out in the bank and we'll head on up to the farm so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting in a pig pen basically now they will be free ranging as such although we will have to fence them in one of the biggest drawbacks of pigs is that they can become feral pretty quickly um, or be destroyed by any hogs that are around wild hogs so we will have to fence it in but um, there will be a substantial area for them to roam around in now of course um, being an animal and a meat product um, we had to look into the environment the environmental effect or effect that they have um, effect of course I think um, on the environment so there's no doubt that any farming venture as such will, will have some sort of effect on the environment and it's a question of mitigating that that effect so with pigs um, compared to to cows in particular um, the methane production is fairly low simply because they digest very similar to humans uh, they only have one stomach um, and they eat pretty much similar types of food to what um, humans do so the production of methane and that is substantially smaller than or lower than than cow production in fact it's probably along the lines 
overall of something like chickens. So from that point of view, yep, pretty pretty good. Yeah, especially as I say compared to cows. Um, of course they are they have four stomachs and they chew the coat and um, produce a lot of methane. The other thing is of course we will be getting a very valuable byproduct from them uh, in that they'll be producing manure which we will be utilizing on our own fields in place of fertilizers. Now, manure of course does um, have its own effect on um, on global warming if you want to put it that but um, once again because we're putting it into the soil enriching the soil and producing crops um, mitigated to a large extent by that so we would need to balance our needs for manure with the amount of pigs that we do raise so that's kind of the thinking behind it right so as you may have noticed we have just placed a modular pig system up it, it comes with the basically the the forage area and then um, what we'll do is we'll put a fence around this as I said just to stop the pigs from escaping and becoming feral and also to stop it any attacks by any um, wild boars as such that may be out there which can be quite detrimental to the health of of um, of the pigs so yeah one of the one of the requirements of of farming something like pigs in in an, in an environmental situation or enviro farm situation is that um, you have systems in place so that the pigs cannot go feral the other thing is they do go feral is that they do turn over the ground quite quite a bit so they can destroy huge swaths of ground especially in the forests and that in itself releases um, methane from rotting material although in my opinion that would be there in any event and would be released somehow um, somewhere along the line mm -hmm. so I'm less of the school of thought that that should be a major consideration when um, working out the effects of pigs on the environment so that's our thinking behind our manure solution let's put it that way <laughs> so we do need to become self-sufficient in manure um, it makes sense to become self-sufficient in manure because we are not fertilizing our fields with chemical fertilizers and this seems to be a far better situation of course we do benefit because um, as the pigs grow older we will sell them into the markets for um, meat for the town so yeah that's pretty good so the most expensive part of this whole operation is uh, the fencing we need to get good solid fencing and make sure that it's um, capable of keeping the pigs in and as such is a pretty expensive operation That whole leg there is just over five thousand euros, just just the downward leg as such. So 
So this system is quite nice, quite a big area. It um, does hold quite a few pigs. Can't remember offhand actually how much how many it holds. I want to say 500, but I stand under correction. Well, of course, we won't put 500 in straight away. I don't think we've built a four to buy the 500. And then we will put in, um, although we don't have to supply water, we'll put in some water troughs and that will be plumbed in directly to um, our water source. So that will keep that full. And uh, we'll also be putting in a um, manure heap, which is going to go in the top left hand corner. And we'll put in some uh, some shelter for the pigs as well. Yes, yeah, so I'm pretty excited to get this going. As I said, we won't be able to get uh, self-sufficient on manure straight away because we'll buy a relatively small amount of pigs to start with and let them breed. They do breed fairly quickly, and we'll. Uh, build up our stock that way so we'll get some mature pigs we'll get some pigs that are called porkers that are been grown for for their meat basically but I do think that some of them will be able to produce at a later stage but and then we'll put some few piglets in just to get us going and then we should have a an ongoing turnover of um, of babies being born until uh, we reach capac capaci capacity, and then we will decide and see how we're going in our manure production. So, as I am voice voicing this episode I've just realized that we're putting in a compost silo and not a manure silo that will be corrected in a future episode it's a costly mistake being made because I'm doing a lot of research and planning on these things um, I have been recording the episodes without voicing them and um, so I am doing voiceovers for this series. Sometimes you notice your mistakes when you're doing the voiceover and it's been done already. <laughs> it also just shows that not everything is, that there are mistakes being made. Costly mistakes. And we are taking the consequences of those mistakes. We're not just, I, I must admit, I do practice a little, little bit. So I did work out how to to put, to use this modular system first, but um, yeah, um, still made a mistake and that is in the actual recording. So it stays. Yeah, it might, I think it's a couple of episodes down the line where I realize we're not getting any compost <laughs> at least we're not getting any manure and we're certainly not getting any compost so this compost solo is, uh, is for the greenhouses that we put in um, in the last episode so we hadn't put the compost silo in yet because uh, it's fairly slow producing so you take the um, the plant material from the greenhouses and you put it into the compost silo and you treat it like silage so you cover it up and it uh, changes into compost very good good use of uh, I mean part of eco farming is trying to use everything that you produce to the fullest of its capabilities so if we have um, we have the greenhouses, any of the leaves and such, we must 
utilize to produce something that uh, well we must it's not that we must but we should try and that's part of our green philosophy or our eco philosophy let's not call it a green philosophy because we're not totally green in that we do have animals we're not working on vegan principles or anything like that right so while I was waffling on there we put in the pens and the water troughs I'll just get rid of these grids so that we now we now have got the scope of our field of our pig pen quite sizable really right let's go and get some food I think so we'll have to buy in food to start with pig food It'll be quite a few months before we can or maybe even a couple of years before we can start actually producing our own pig food um, we will need to put in some sort of production for pig food and we'll sort that out once we once we get there in the meantime we'll buy buying the, the food in um, we'll buy the straw in until we get our first harvests and um, yeah we might not be fully fully self-sufficient on straw but I think with the wheat fields and the um, what is the other field that we did sorghum field uh, we should get a reasonable supply of straw which we'll put into the into the pig pen of course that's one of the ingredients that help with the making of um, of manure right let's go and hook up the trailer and we can go and get some pig food do think it's going to cost quite a bit I think it'll be a while before the pigs are paying their own way because of course mature, mature manure is relatively cheap to buy but I do want to become self-sufficient on manure production and also we want to supply some type of sustainable meat to the to the town right let's get this loaded up it's going to cost a little bit right there we go let's look for what we're we looking for um pig food there we go I wish this would the only thing that I don't like about this situation with the with the store is that um, when I'm filling up there I never know the actual price so that's a fair whack to pay for the uh, pig food but pig food is always expensive at the end of the day it's going to be our main our main cost And I think if we, with the manure, we can't just um, attribute the monetary value to the production of manure. We also need to add in the intangible value of producing our own manure. Um, so although the pigs may not be terribly profitable, certainly in the short term um, they will be profitable in the medium to long term but um, we will be contributing to our eco farm or the establishment and the running of our eco farm now this is the little tricky part is you have to get fairly close to one of the silos to actually offload 
I'm sure as we go along I'll find a find it's a little bit easier to um, to put the feed into these little silos because the actual trigger points are right underneath the silos. There we go. And sometimes you get too close, you have to rock it a bit because um, it tends to. There we go. So it didn't quite fill them all. But as I go along, I will work out where, where the most efficient place it is to actually offload the pick food. In the meantime, we're just getting it into them get that done and then we'll go and get some straw the straw as I said is relatively inexpensive but we will be producing a fair amount of straw um, from wheat fields and barley fields as such we will be doing a few fields of those every season probably alternate between barley and wheat um, because the chickens are going to be eating a lot as well we need to become self-sufficient on chicken feed as well okay let's get some pigs in I'm not too fast by which breed they all are pretty much the same in terms of uh, production so not too worried about that let's get 60 in just got 10 in I'll get some porkies in as well So it's a thousand pigs that we can actually accommodate in there. It'll be a long time before we get up to that level. And I don't think we'll need more than that. Um, we might have to limit it because it might become quite costly to feed a thousand pigs. We certainly would have to be self-sufficient in pig food by then. And also it will depend on how much manure I don't want to overproduce over too much manure but then again we can supply it to our neighbors but we'll you know we'll deal with those problems or those issues as they arise it will be important for us to um, to continuously monitor our, um, our effect on the um, on the, the the ecology or our eco credentials we have to keep on monitoring that as we go through and adjusting most probably So we've put in 10 adults, put in 20 porkers in, of each of two different types of pigs. It's the Berkshire we're doing now. And we'll put in some babies as well. That'll start giving us the, the production runs. Then I think after, as soon as the porkers are ready to produce whether they do produce or not I'm not quite sure I think they will um, we will then sell the older pigs on there they are squeaking away and won't be long before they forage this place into ground which I'm not too worried about because we are feeding it does allow them to forage around and snuffle around in the ground just doing what pigs do fantastic let's close that up make sure they don't escape 
So the next thing to do is to go and get some straw, I guess. Put some straw in. Remembering, of course, at this stage, when I was recording this, I did not know that I'd put the wrong silo in. One, the wrong, uh, the wrong manure silo in. So uh, I did merrily go along and uh, <laughs> and uh, put some some straw in. It was relatively inexpensive, so I'm not too much of a train smash, as they say in the classics. Right, there we go. Just bought the the piglets. We'll get some of the land race piglets as well. Just like the looks of piglets running around. And this on pig farms, there's always piglets running around somewhere. Here they are. Fantastic. We've put it well away from the house simply because of the squealies. The squealing noises try to limit that. Right. Straw time. So this top area where we mow the meadow down uh, we're going to use for some productions and we're going to use for planting well a lot of it will be used for planting the inputs to make pig food so I think we need to plant potatoes and sugar beets and um, wheat and barley and these type of things I think uh, we'll find a production unit and find out exactly what it needs and we'll work work that way. There are a couple of smaller pig food production operations which we'll put in to start with but I do want to put in a proper pig food production because it's it's going to be integral to our um, our farm and the running of our farm and becoming as self-sufficient as possible terms of uh, our inputs. There we go. Yep, that didn't break the bank. That we're down to <laughs> a very, very small amount. In fact, looks like it may have, may break the bank. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, we're just getting started. There's not a lot of pigs in there at the moment, so we don't have to um, worry about filling the food and straw etc to capacity at this point in time that I'm sure will come along fairly soon as the as the pigs breed they do breed fairly quickly which is quite a good thing really we need to get a remote control on this gate <laughs> oh dear Getting lazy and don't want to jump up and down from the tra from the tractor. Yeah, so that the straw is a much much easier offload. Oh, I haven't decided. I might put another load in. We'll see. to say with here there's not a huge amount of stock in here at the moment so might not need it straight away in any case that's that done that's the pigs up and running and hopefully we get manure fairly soon although it won't be as soon as I'd hoped thank you so much for watching if you've enjoyed this episode please like and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next one cheerio